What's going on YouTube? Josh here checking in. Very excited because I just got the Squat and Science Velocity Based Training Device in the mail. Gonna open it up, gonna test it out. I'm not actually gonna test it out right now because it's kind of late and I've had a few beers. But uh, we are gonna test it out probably first thing in the morning. So I'm really stoked to open this up. I'm not just gonna do like a simple unboxing video because it's kind of pointless. But I am just going to open it up right now on camera, give you guys my impression of the quality of this thing. Looks like they sent a bag. Let's check this out. All right. I think that's pretty much what we got in here. So this thing, if you guys are not familiar, it's kind of, it's this company, Squat and Science. That's their charging cable. Uh, this looks like uh, the wrap that goes around the bar. It's kind of the leash for the bar. And this is the actual device. It's made in the USA. Overall, looks pretty solid. So I got the black and red color scheme on this guy so it matched the, uh, matched the gym setup. But this thing looks pretty solid. I'll have to look into how exactly this thing works. I have really have no idea how this works. Looks like you turn it on right like that. It's got a nice screen on it. Um, you know, pretty simple charging mechanism, but we're gonna test it out. Probably gonna do a upper body workout with this guy, see how it works. You guys have seen my review on this channel. If you haven't on the uh, push strength velocity training device, cause that thing was pretty terrible, uh, but I'll post the links for that video below. This is the new guy, um, you know, as far as price range, can't beat it as long as it works as advertised. So, you know, be sure to watch the rest of the video. I'll let you know my initial thoughts on this device. So if you guys stuck with me for that two minute introduction, you're here because you want to watch some lifting footage. You want to know my thoughts on the squat and science velocity based training device, or at least that's what I assume you're here for. So anyway, the first thing I'm going to point out is that I actually did not do a very good assessment of these first few sets. Take a look at that device. See right there in the bottom, that thing is moving all over the place. It's not because this device sucks, it's because I was way too excited to start using this thing and I didn't even read the instructions. The short of it is, you're actually supposed to anchor it to a plate. Any kind of small plate will do, but that's because there's a huge magnet on the bottom of it. So that makes things really easy. I guess the only downside to that would be if you're used to using bumper plates that don't have a metal core in the middle, uh, I don't think that you'd really be able to anchor it so well, you'd have to kind of figure out a workaround. Probably similar to what you'll see me do here in a few sets once I realized that this thing was kind of flying all over the place. So this workout here overall was really, really good. I had a really solid meal in me this day, um, you know, so my pre-workout nutrition was on point. I had pre-workout supplement, which by the way guys, I don't take every single workout. I consume a fair bit of caffeine just in my day to day, and honestly my tolerance is pretty high that I don't want to make it any worse, and so really I'll only do it if I know I'm, I'm going to go really hard in the gym or if I'm just really losing steam. So as you can see, anyway, back to this uh, squat and science device, I got a little bit smarter. I didn't quite anchor it to a plate like the magnet says, but I just put a bunch of five pound plates around it and that helped it nice and secure. So over here, you'll see me going to take a look at my velocity and what, there, there's nothing there. Yeah, that's because I'm an idiot and when I was clearing out the last rep, I thought I would save battery and turning it off. It turns out that the battery on this thing is exceptional and you definitely can just leave it on for your whole workout. I've honestly used it a bunch for the past six weeks and I have not had to recharge it. So this thing, battery is not an issue. This, you'll see the actual velocity. So it's a pretty cool display. It tells you your average velocity, your peak velocity, as well as your range of motion. So that's actually a really helpful tip uh, to use that information, especially the range of motion uh, for lifts that are really dependent on that, such as your bench press. Um, you know, really any of your lifts are dependent on that, but especially the bench press, you could notice that, you know, just certain technique changes can significantly change that. You know, I noticed that when I was a lot more cognizant of being tight, it really made a big difference and I was able to have more consistent range of motion. All right, so on to some kneeling landmine press. This exercise is bomb like Donkey Kong, all right? I used to pretty much never do any sort of landmine accessories with the exception of maybe 
um, you know, like a neutral grip landmine row every once in a while if I was at a gym that had access to it. I never ever did any sort of pressing movements with a landmine and really it's just because I was using dumbbells and you know other sort of exercises I just you know there's so many varieties of exercises out there I never really use these very much and quite frankly I really really enjoy this exercise I feel like it hits the delts really well you have um, some control of the weight more so than say with a standard dumbbell in the sense that you're restricted based on the length of your barbell so you're basically going in a similar path but that being said it's not like you're doing a machine and the bar path is going to be exact every single time so you do have to have those stabilizer muscles um, you know the kneeling landmine press and even more so in the standing landmine press there's also a fair amount of core activity here so you need to really engage those obliques to make sure that you're balanced, especially since you kind of have a staggered stance here. It's not like you're seated and you're doing, say, both sides at one time. So that's another advantage of this, of this exercise here. Overall, really a big fan, and just a big fan of the landmine in general. You'll see I basically finish off this workout using a bunch of different landmine movements that I wasn't previously doing. And so the short of it is, if you haven't been messing around with landmine stuff, I would encourage you to check it out. So this movement right here, these are called Meadows Rows, okay? This is this exercise was created by John Meadows, who's one of the uh, older um, bodybuilders, but the dude is jacked out of his mind and he's a really knowledgeable guy. He's got a lot of kind of unique exercises and exercise variations, definitely worth checking out. So this is me getting amped up here, all right? <laughs> I had to cut out the music because otherwise I would get flagged for copyright, but you know, like I said, I had really good nutrition and I had a pretty good amount of caffeine before this workout and I finished off just going ham, right? So this is 270, uh, well I guess not 275 exactly, but it's, now we're doing three plates, okay? So this is definitely the most I've ever done and as you can tell, there's a fair amount of momentum being used here and that's because, you know, I made a video about this before, about cheat reps and stuff like that. Most of the time I use more strict form, so to speak, but maybe one out of every three exercise uh, workouts, especially for pulling, I will just go ham and just move the weight. And you know, I've built up to that and it's not like I'm going to hurt myself because I do this intermittently and I've slowly progressed to being able to do that. So this is the neutral grip um, landmine row, I guess you'd call it. So that was just three plates and a 25, and after that I went up to four plates, which you'll see there's a lot of momentum here because this is this is really heavy for me. I know there are some people who you know can do like six or seven plates and they're ginormous and have really strong, way stronger than I am. I am not on that level. So you know that being said, I was pretty happy with this. Anyway, guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video like this video, post your questions below about velocity-based training, about my training, anything, and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. I'll see y'all in the next one.